So, hi everyone. I'm Albin Suresh. Uh, I'm a software developer here at Software AG, and I'm one of the maintainers of the ThinH.io open source project in GitHub. And this presentation is on how you can manage your child devices using ThinH.io. So, uh, with child devices, what I mean is any device that is connected to ThinH.io directly. Okay. And uh, with the recent 0 0.8 release of ThinH, we have uh, introduced configuration management capability for child devices as, of, as our first step to providing a broader child device management capability for connected devices. Okay. So with this feature, what can you really manage? So what kind of devices can you manage? So you can manage any device ranging from a complex, say, uh, complex OT devices like PLCs, a constraint uh, devices like PLCs, to smart devices like smart TVs, smart cameras, etc. So you just have to get them connected to ThinEdge, and then with the help of ThinEdge, you can manage these devices from a connected cloud. Okay. And I will uh, show you uh, how you can do this. Uh, you can remotely from a connected uh, IoT platform, you can remotely manage some configuration files on these connected devices. Okay. So before we jump into the demonstration, so let's talk about what a child device is. Okay. So in simple terms, a child device can be any device that is connected to a gateway device where ThinEdge is running on, which I'll refer to as the ThinEdge device for the rest of the session. Okay. So the use case is that. So these child devices will be generating uh, data like measurements, events, alarms, etc., and uh, they would have their own software to be managed, configurations to be managed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you would want to have uh, an entity in the cloud for this device with its own identity. So you don't want to associate all the data of this device with the gateway device itself. Okay, so you want to see it as an independent device which you can manage independently from the cloud okay so and the association that exists in the cloud is that this child device will be a child device of the parent thinx device okay so that is what a child device is and uh, there are several flavors of it okay uh, the first one is simple OT devices like sensors or actuators connected to the gateway uh, to the thin edge device, or even complex OT devices like PLCs, which are further connected to more sensors and actuators. Okay, So this is one deployment. So these are the kinds of devices which usually, in most cases, cannot directly connect to the cloud, Okay, but uh, needs the help of a gateway device and a thin edge installed on it to get them connected. Okay, But you would want to see this entire <coughs> Uh, device deployment with as independent devices in the cloud. So this is the first use case. The second use case is connecting smart devices, say smart devices like a smart TV, smart cameras, or even devices like Raspberry Pis. Okay, so these devices are capable of connecting directly to the cloud, but sometimes you wouldn't want to do it. Uh, and one reason could be a security. Okay, so when you have a fleet of devices, such smart devices, you wouldn't want to connect them all to the cloud directly and expose them all to the internet and all the risks associated with it. But rather, you might prefer to connect them to a secure gateway, secured using ThinEdge, okay, hardened using ThinEdge, and uh, and then they appear in the cloud. So, and you, you can still, even though they are not directly connected, you can still manage them from the cloud as independent devices. Okay. And another use case, non-security non related use cases, where you don't want to push all the data from these devices to the cloud, but you would rather do some pre-processing of the data on the gateway device before uh, that, before only the process data is sent to the cloud. So this is another use case where this kind of a deployment is commonly seen. Okay, and the final one is logical child devices. So these are basically the child devices are not really not always physical child devices connected, but it can even be. Uh, just processes or containers running on the same gateway device itself, which is acting like child devices in the cloud. So they may or may not be connected to further sensors and actuators or even other devices, but these are just logical processes running on the gateway and appearing as child devices in the cloud. Okay, so these are the common uh, use cases or deployments that we have seen. Okay, so now let's uh, see the feature in action uh, with the 
representative use case. OK, so here I'll demonstrate this feature with a, the use case of a company managing some digital signage assets, uh, running some ad advertisement campaigns in areas where it's deployed. OK, so let me share my screen. <clears throat> So hope you can see my uh, browser window and my terminal. OK, so for this demo, I'll be using Cumulosity IoT Cloud uh, for configuration management. So here I've got my Synergy device already connected. OK, and it has a few child devices connected to it. So these are some uh, say smart TVs, smart TV assets uh, deployed say in a hotel. OK, so there are TVs at the reception. There are TVs at the uh, lobby, all running different uh, sorts of ad campaigns. OK, now let me connect a third. Smart device, OK, so uh, I've, I'm running uh, a piece of software called a child device connector, which I'll talk to talk about later in detail. OK, so once I've started that. I should see. Yeah. So this device here, OK, and it has the configuration and uh, this de device has the configuration management feature enabled, OK? So what are the configurations that are available on the device, OK? So if I check this, there is a file called con C8 by configuration plugin, an entry called C8 by configuration plugin, and looking at it, you can know that, OK, these are the files that I can manage from it. OK, so I can view these files. I can manage this file. So this is actually uh, a playlist file where all the ad campaigns are listed. OK, so let's fetch this configuration file from that uh, from that device. So I'm going to trigger a snapshot request. OK, demo curse, it seems. So things that were functioning fine until a few minutes back just stops working. Uh, OK. It looks like uh, my device is failing to connect to. The cloud. OK, so yeah, I probably will have to. Improvise. Improvise a bit, OK, so I'll yeah. Sorry about that. My. It's failing to connect, so I'll, I'll probably allow to yeah. Just walk you through the process. OK, so with this feature, actually, uh, you can actually fetch a configuration file from the connected child device using the get config snapshot device option. OK, or you could even push a configuration file. So the configuration that was there on the device would something look something like this with the ad campaign. So there is an ad campaign one and ad campaign two running on the device. OK, and uh, if you want to update that campaign so you could actually so there is another version of it here where a third ad campaign could be added so all you could do all you can need to do is just push that request to the to the uh, connected device and it should have actually uh, updated the file but uh, for some reason i'm getting timeouts here okay so maybe uh, let's skip over that part and let's uh, let's look at how the feature actually works. Okay. So switching back to our presentation. Okay. So so this is how uh, a typical deployment would look like, where you have a child device, an external child device, and uh, you have the gateway device where Synergy is installed. And you need another a small piece of software, another small piece of software called a child device connector, which can talk to the child device. OK, and these child devices uh, in the uh, in the world of IoT, they come in different forms and shapes and they talk in different kinds of protocols. Right. So you need this small piece of software that can actually talk the protocol that is supported by the child device. Okay? So and for this child device connector, this is the piece of software that you saw me running earlier during the demo. So. We have written a reference implementation of this child device connector, which can interact with 
uh, Tinage or where it's well known HTTP and MQTT APIs okay, in Python. So all you have to do is adapt the reference implementation uh, to, to, the, to the protocol that your child device supports. Okay, so over this protocol, this child device needs to do a few things. Okay, and we'll talk about what are the responsibilities of this child device connector. Okay, so the child device connector needs to do the following. Okay, first responsibility is bootstrapping the child device itself. Okay, so bootstrap the child device by sending its configuration list to the thin edge device. Okay, so the configuration list is the list of configurations supported by that particular uh child device so the configurations you would like to manage from from the cloud okay so this is the list so the connector needs to publish this list to the uh to the edge so that the edge is aware of what all configuration files to manage on that particular device okay and once it has the list available then it will be sending configuration snapshot or configuration update request to the to that particular child device and the child device connector should be responding to this by uh, interacting with that external device over that third party protocol and interacting with Thinage over the local network via its well known HTTP and MQTT APIs. So these are the responsibilities of the child device connector. And then what will Thinage do? Okay. Thinage is responsible for managing the supported configuration list of the child device, okay, what it uploads. And then it needs to map the requests coming from the cloud to configuration snapshot and configuration update requests understood by the child device. Okay, so the commands, the thin edge commands that can be understood by the child device. And then the major part is downloading. So for example, in the case of a configuration update that you want to push from the cloud to the device, thin edge will be responsible for downloading that configuration file from the connected cloud. Okay, in a secure manner. So we don't want to push the responsibility of download to the child device itself, okay? Uh, because in many cases, the uh, the connection may not be uh, reli um, reliable, okay? There will be flaky, flaky connections you'll have to deal with and uh, the security aspects as well. So ThinEdge will do all that heavy lifting, okay? It will ensure secure and resilient downloads of these files. And then once a the file is fully downloaded, then it will make it available to the child device over the local network, okay? And then for the child device, it's just a download from the local network. Okay, and similarly, even for the configuration snapshots uploaded by the child device, the the, the thin edge uh, offering will upload that to the connected cloud. So even if it takes n number of retries with flaky networks and stuff like that, uh, thin edge will ensure that the file is eventually uploaded to the connected cloud. Okay, so these are the responsibilities of thin edge in this case. Okay, and let's look at how this is going to happen okay so it starts from the child device so the bootstrapping part the initial bootstrapping part starts from the child device so the child device connector gathers the configuration supported configuration list from the child device okay and using this list it needs to prepare a toml file called c8y configuration plugin dot toml okay. and once this toml file is prepared uh, the device needs to upload that to thin edge. The connector needs to upload that to thin edge over HTTP. And once the upload is complete, it needs to notify thin edge over MQTT that this upload completed. Okay. And once the upload completes, thin edge will then further create the child device in the cloud if the child device doesn't already exist. And then enable configuration management for that child device and then update its configuration list as well. Okay. So this is the bootstrap flow. Now, once and uh, looking at uh, the that configuration toml file that we talked about that the uh, connector needs to prepare so it's a toml file with a list of file entries okay and each entry has a path a file system path where you can find that configuration file and a, and a type which is a unique id to uh, uniquely identify that configuration file okay so for those who are familiar with the configuration management feature of thinedge itself uh, this this will be a familiar format because the net uses the same configuration file format for its own configuration management. Okay. And now once configuration management is enabled, how do you handle a configuration update request? Okay, so this is the flow. So the request will come from, from the cloud. So the uh, configuration upload uh, download request will come from the cloud to thin edge okay and thin edge will securely download the configuration file from the URL in the incoming request, the C8Y URL. And then 
it will host that file once it downloaded once it's done fully downloaded it will host that file locally and publish it via a ted url okay so that it's available for child devices to download over the local network and then once it's hosted locally the request a configuration update request is sent from tenet to the child device connector over mqtt with the ted url in it okay and once the child device connector receives this request it can optionally acknowledge that request by sending an executing status update to tenet which will further be propagated to complexity cloud and then after that child device needs to download this file from tenet so it's just a download over the local network okay so it should be fairly simple and straightforward and once a file is downloaded you the child device connector applies the configuration file on that external child device so this is where it will push that configuration file to the device or using that third party protocol whatever third party protocol that this child device supports and once that update is complete notify child device uh, sorry notify tenets that uh, the upload is complete with a successful status update okay which will further be up uh, pushed to cumulosity cloud to mark that whole operation successful okay so this is how the child device connector with the help of tenets completes a configuration update flow and configuration snapshot flow is fairly similar so the request coming from the cloud uh, optional acknowledgments getting sent back to tenets uh, and then the only difference is that here the connector will fetch the configuration snapshot from the child device over that third party protocol that it supports and then upload the configuration file to the ted url that it received in the request and then once the once the upload is complete mark the operation successful by sending an mqtt message and then it at the end of it will upload that file to cumulosity uh, and then mark the operation successful in cumulosity as well so this is how a child device connector needs to handle uh, a configuration snapshot request so this is it that's it so these are the three responsibilities that the child device connector needs to uh, cater to okay now coming to back to our uh, deployment diagram so this is the commonly seen deployment for uh, for child devices where the you will have uh, many of our customers will have a fleet of existing child devices which support some third party protocol and you would want to manage them so and you wouldn't want to install something new on all these devices to your existing fleet or reconfigure some something on this child devices okay but you would want to just probably just uh, have something on the gateway device itself and then using that just connect to your entire fleet of existing devices okay so you just install that child device connector on the gateway device itself and then uh, get uh, your child device connected to uh, the net okay so here the main advantage is that you don't need to touch the child device for any uh, any additional configurations or installations okay but for those customers uh, for which this deployment is not feasible say a gateway device that is handling thousands of devices different kinds of devices then you you will have different kinds of agents for each device type that supports a different protocol right so you wouldn't want to put all of that into the gateway device itself so if that's not feasible and if your child device itself supports installation of new software okay then you can actually install the child device connector on the device on the child device itself and have it communicate with tenet over its well known http and mqtt apis over the local network so this is also another deployment option that is available okay so yeah that's basically uh, all about the feature and uh, so what are the future areas that we are exploring so how do we extend this further uh, so one thing that we are immediately considering is an out of the box child device connector so as i said earlier we have a reference implementation reference connector implementation already written in python that is available to you all to adapt uh, for your child device but we are also thinking of uh, developing an out of the box connector written in the secure in a secure and memory efficient way in rust using rust and uh, where your third party protocol specific logic can be easily plugged into so this is one option that we are considering and another step is basically expanding this uh, child device management capability further 
okay so by supporting software management on child device so we already support configuration management software management log management etc on the thinnest device itself so now we are slowly extending that to uh, the child device as well we started with configuration management and next we can uh, uh, we are considering software management if there is interest for that okay and then the other one is support for hierarchical child devices so currently the current implementation only supports a single level of child devices only the devices that are directly connected to the gateway device but we have come across a few use cases where this child devices further has child devices so uh, grandchildren devices or great grandchildren devices and stuff like that so very complex deployments with multiple levels of hierarchy so that is also another challenge that we are exploring okay and the final one is actually a bulk management of a configuration so for example if there is a gateway device that is managing multiple uh, multiple child devices and you want to push a single configuration file update to all of them with a single click of a button okay so you push it once and that uh, thin edge dispatches that to all the connected child devices of that particular config that particular type so that uh, you with a single click you update your entire fleet so this is another direction that we are exploring so uh, please give us your feedback on which is the uh, next feature that you would like to see implemented and if we have missed any use case yeah feel free to share them as well hopefully this time everything holds up okay so so uh, this was the uh, use case that i actually wanted to demonstrate a realistic use case of child devices so uh, the use case was something like this. So uh, it was a digital signage management company managing a few smart digital signage assets, some smart TVs that are deployed as part of their fleet. OK, so this so you have all seen uh, these kinds of digital signage assets in say airports, railway stations, uh, hotel lobbies and all that, or even in your office spaces. Right? So so here is a company uh, that is managing some of these assets and running their advertisement campaigns and other things uh, using this device. OK, so here uh, I've got my uh, thinnest device connected. So so there is a location, say, assume a hotel where uh, there are several of these assets, several of these TVs deployed in different locations, and they are all connected to they're all not directly connected to uh, the Internet, but rather connected to Cumulosity uh, via a gateway device, which is the thinnest device. OK, so here I've got that device connected and among the child devices, I can see some of these TVs. OK, so let me just navigate to the one that I'm going to manage now. And if you go to that, so you will see all the <clears throat> available options. So the management dashboard, so the measurements dashboard, even dashboard and even the and specifically the configuration management dashboard for that particular asset. So this this TV is the child device of the thinnest device. OK, now. Let me just get the terminal also running. Now, just to see what are the configuration sub files available on the device. So you will see a list of configuration entries here. And the first one is C8Y hyphen configuration plugin. The terminal file that I uh, showed uh, where the configuration list is uh, list is populated. So you can just fetch that. And you can see that these are the files that can be managed on that particular child device. So there is a path, the path of the file, the actual file on the child device. So there are two files here. So for that particular asset, there is a config.json that, that manages some of the configurations of the display unit itself. And there is a play, playlist.json file, which is uh, the, uh, the file that has a list of the campaigns, the advertisement campaigns that are running on that particular device. Okay, so let's see what 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 are what all campaigns are running on that particular device so let's navigate to the playlist tree and let's fetch that using the get config snapshot device snapshot from the device option and once it's complete so you can see a json file so from this you can know that you know that there are two advertisements running on it. So there is an ad, uh, advertisement one, so an advertisement of the new S class and another advertisement for their vision uh, electric uh, electric line. Okay, so these are the two advertisements that are running on currently on the device. So this is the current snapshot. Now I would like to 
update the campaign. So I would like to uh, replace this advertisement three with another one, see an advertisement two. Okay, so let me. So I've got some uh, configurations here. Okay, so the version one of it has just advertisement one and adver advertisement two. So I'm going to replace the existing campaign uh, with the new campaign list. Okay, so what I can do is just push that and you can see that it succeeded. Okay, now just to validate that it really succeeded. So let's fetch it again from the device. And yeah, as you can see, it got updated. So 81 and 82 instead of 83. And if you were noticing in the background, so I've got a uh, MQTT listener uh, on all the uh, all the MQTT communication that's happening over the uh, over the MQTT broker for on on the touch topics. And here you can see that the requests, the config snapshot request was actually coming to the child device and the child device was actually responding to those configuration snapshot with the executing and successful status back to back uh, and uploading the configuration file in between. But that's an HTTP interaction which you can, cannot see with this thing. So yeah, so this is the uh, demonstration of that use case. And uh, yeah, this is how you can manage uh, configuration files on your child devices by just getting them connected to NH. And for those who are familiar with the configuration management feature of uh, the parent device, the Tinex device itself, the experience is exactly the same. Okay, so come, starting from the configuration file and uh, the rest of the flow as well. If you have any questions, feel free to raise them now or uh, even reach out to us on our Discord channels or even feel free, to, feel free to create issues or start discussions on our GitHub project. So thanks for listening and sorry about the broken demo. Uh, hi, Solomon. So I'm just going to open your mic for a second if you want to raise your question. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, yep. Uh, my question would be uh, for the child device configuration management, uh, the way you demonstrated is there will be a device agent which will be listening and then responding accordingly. But for the um, for the actual teenage, the configuration management is already handled by the, the teenage instance itself or is there any custom logic that has to be handled as well? Yeah, hi hey, Solomon. So uh, I believe you were talking about that child device connector piece of software, right? So yes, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So the child device connector is actually the bridge between the external device and the net. So uh, this connector will be receiving the requests from the net over the local MQTT uh, channel. Okay. So it will. So this and the response, the prime responsibility of this connector is to talk to that external device over whatever protocol that it supports. And we can build some of some out of the box connectors that talk some very uh, commonly used protocols, right? Like say HTTP or Modbus or something like that. Okay. But for really customized devices, then there is always this element of uh, customizability where the device owner or the device developer will have to add some piece of logic that defines how you can fetch a configuration from that device or how you can push an update to that device. Okay, so and this again, uh, all the uh, for the all the MQTT interactions and HTTP interactions, we have already developed the reference agent. So you can just adapt it quickly by just plugging in or gluing in that uh, that device specific protocol logic. Okay, and yeah. we are trying to. As you as you uh, as you asked, like we are actually trying to uh, come up with a out of the box agent where you can just probably write a single script or something like that with just focusing just on that third party protocol interaction and just plug it into the uh, into that uh, out of box child device connector. So this is another item that we have in our roadmap. Thank you. Excellent. Th 